Hi guys and welcome to Trinket Corner. This is part 1 of 2 where I'll show you how I made this baby fairy in its nest. I get a lot of inspiration from Pinterest, so when I came across these fairy baby creatures, I knew I have to try to make one myself. I'm not so good at sculpting, so I used the silicone mold of a sleeping baby angel. Because I had no mold release spray, I applied a thin layer of baby powder inside the mold. Now it's time for liquid plastic. I use Smoothcast 320 resin. As usual, links will be in the description box. Please wear gloves and follow all the safety instructions while working with resin. Mix parts A and B according to instructions. This solution dries in 6 minutes, so you have to work pretty quickly. I just mix it and use the spoon to fill in the most detailed parts of the mold. You can also check my previous video where I make a mermaid baby. I use air drying clay instead of plastic there. It's much easier to use, but this time I just wanted to use different material to spice things up. I of course spilled some of the liquid, so a word of advice, use a mat or paper to protect your working surface. When it dried, and it dried pretty quickly, it was quite strong, however I had no problem getting it out of the mold. So this is how it's supposed to look, a little cherub slipping on a leaf. It's very cute, but I wanted a fairy, not an angel, so I cut off the biggest part of its wings, leaving just a little part where I will glue new fairy wings that I was about to make from UV resin. I also cut the stem of the leaf with X-Acto knife. Now for the wings, if you haven't watched my Harry Potter Flying Keys video, I recommend checking it out, because I explained there in details how to make wings from UV resin. Here I'm just going to go very quickly over the basic steps. For this project, I decided to draw the wings. I will put links to a couple of free patterns you can use, Unfortunately, I didn't save this pattern I drew, but I was just too lazy to print, so I doodled it myself. After printing or drawing the wings, put a transparent file over it, fix it with taping mask and apply to sided tape. Take a soft wire and go over every line of the wing. Now I take a little bit of a product that is called Fairy Wings. Basically, this is hard black UV resin. I use chopstick to apply this product onto the points where wires should be connected to each other. I use very minimal amount of this resin, because I don't want my wings to be very black. I send this under UV lamp for 5 minutes to cure. While working with UV resin, I use silicone mold for eyes. I basically divide the clear resin into two parts. For green part, I put a couple of droplets of green resin dye. You don't actually see here very well and I'm really really sorry, but my silicone mold is too dark. 
and I added gold glitter into the next portion of resin. Next, I apply a very thin layer of clear resin onto the wings. I help myself with chopstick to spread it as evenly as possible. Try to spread it as thin as possible because next we are going to add the colored resin. I used different chopsticks for different colors of resin, just not to get them mixed while I'm working on it. So I start with the green resin, I put it in the, in the corner of the wing and I sort of push it into the transparent resin. Because you have transparent resin there, it's going to mix with the green one and create very nice transitions. You don't want to put like a lot of green in one big dot. Instead, you want to help yourself with chopstick and go making lines, but not mix it. Now I take another chopstick and I apply just a little bit of resin that has glitter in it. I work again from the corner, sort of pushing the green resin further into transparent resin. Don't mix it, just spread it with waves. I applied larger glitter pieces onto the edges of the wings. When the wings are cured under UV lamp, I took my favorite luminous powder and rubbed it onto the wings. Another layer of transparent resin and these wings are ready. If you printed your wings, you have no problem. But if you drew them like I did, you will have to do two more wings that are symmetric to these ones. I took a pen and went over each line pretty strongly emphasizing them. Then I turned over the paper and now that my lines are more visible, I was able to trace the mirrored image onto the other side of the paper. Now repeat all the previous steps once more. I found it very useful to keep the other wings close to me while I'm working on a new pair, just to be sure to make them uh, look like the previous pair. Now let's paint the fairy. I use acrylic paint, by the way. I mixed two colors, one of them was a bit yellowish, so I had to add pink in it. Now the first layer over this liquid plastic was way too transparent, so I had to apply another layer, and I think I ended up applying three layers over this baby. Now it's too flat, we want to add some shadows. I took a little bit of the same color, I mixed it with tiny dot of brown and tiny dot of red. 
I got a darker skin tone. Now we are contouring the fairy. I'm not a professional artist, so I sort of go with my instincts. Every part of his face and body that would usually get some sort of shadow is getting darker skin tone. This includes areas under the eyebrows, in between his hands, under his cheeks, under the nose, inside part of the ear, basically everywhere where you see a line, you want to emphasize it with additional shadow. I also emphasize the sides of the forehead. For those of you who watch makeup tutorials, uh, I'm basically contouring this fairy baby. Now I took a little bit more of the skin tone and added only red to make this nice pink color. I'm going to apply it onto the cheeks, onto the lips. I apply it as if I would apply an eyeliner. I emphasize a little bit its eyelids. And don't be afraid to apply too little or too much because you have the previous color and you can always correct it with the previous color. As a final step, I took just the red color and applied it onto the lips and cheeks. I'm going to cover this perfect angel hair with a small piece of fur that I had from another project. This is not real fur. I glue gunned the fur onto its head and then I gave it a little trim because it was too long. I wanted this fairy to have a hat that looked like a top part of an acorn. I didn't have that big of an acorn, so I took two top parts of acorns and I glued them on its head. I glued the wings onto the part of the previous wings I left specifically for having some sort of base. For future wings. I just use hot glue because the back side of the fairy is not going to be visible. I wasn't sure if I want to use the small pair of wings I made, but I think they add more dimension to the project, so I ended up gluing them anyways. My acorn looked unnatural, so I added a little bit more to cover the head better. However, I ended up with two very visible glue gun traces onto the head, which looked not very good. So my solution here was to add hot glue in droplets onto random places of its head and cover everything with brown acrylic paint.
I think it ended up solving my issue. To make it look even more like an acorn, I cut a little bit from the plastic stem of artificial flower and glued it onto the top of the hat. I used the darkest brown I had and then I mixed this brown with the skin tone color I had previously for the fairy and now all I had to do is to dry brush the hat with lighter brown color just to make it pop. And final step for making the fairy, cover the leaf with green acrylic paint. I used quite small brush for this part of the project because it was very close to the fairy and I didn't want any green color onto its skin. I knew it would be a headache to try to cover it afterwards. I ended up applying um, two layers of green paint just to make it a little bit darker. This is the final result of this video. If you want to see how I made the nest, please check the second part of the video. And for now, I wish you a whimsical day. See you guys soon. Bye.